Hello, Owen. Hello. We may be live. Maybe not yet. Maybe we are. Hello. Ah, uh, wait. Okay. Okay, Owen. No, no, no. What up? No, you didn't transition to the right one. There we go. That's it. Hello, right, everyone. Then. Hello, and we're live eventually. Yeah, yeah we're actually here now. Possible button, uh, <laughs> but the correct one. Excellent. Very good. It's only four. Buttons it's only four press. buttons. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well done. It's a good start. Yes. So as you can see, high table today. It's good. It's very I think comfy. About half a meter taller than last time. Yep. Feels like so. I'm at the bar. Excellent. So let's wait for a few people to jump online. We've got a few already. Welcome, everyone. Episode number twenty-three. Yep. It's good to be back. Absolutely. So slowly, Melbourne is coming back to a bit more of a normal feel. And Double Live is back in the shop, as you've seen for the past three weeks. Yeah, definitely. There's a bit of a vibe happening outside. City a lot more people different. moving around. Most definitely. And uh, last week we had a very different episode. It did. We had a different person. Different person. A different BJ. So Noali was here. So thank you again, Noali, for coming, joining us last week. It was yeah. uh, very nice. It was. It was great to see you again. Absolutely. So what we have today we've got lots of things we've got a car at the frontier as usual yes that's right got lots of new products here at yep. the back we're jam-packed this time and i think we're going to talk about servos for rc yes. cars yes uh, meccano yep some train products put on scenics mm, and a lot more really interesting looking stuff Absolutely. so this week is probably about three weeks worth of stuff that we're we're about to show you it's all yes. coming at once so very excited to, to show you all the different bits and pieces absolutely so let me see if my chat is coming back i don't see the chart so um, anyway, so we should start talking about the competition, which is going to yes. start today, I believe. That's right. So last week um, we announced a new competition, which is going to involve the Hearns Workshop yes. products. So all you need to do is um, go over to the uh, Facebook events page, look at the latest event, which will be the uh, the Hearns Workshop competition, and then we'll have um, uh, all the guidelines on uh, how to enter. So all you need to do is um, use Hearns Workshop product in your build. Let us know which bits you used, uh, in case they're not obvious. Um, so we're going to have uh, three different prizes uh, awarded. So rather than having first, second, and third, we're going to have uh, uh, most, uh, so you enter with the most used products. Yeah, that's right. So you just jam pack it full of Herms Workshop bits. Uh, then there'll be the one with the most creative use of Herms Workshop product. Yep. And then there'll be an overall best impression type. So three awards and they'll all be split evenly. So Absolutely. go for it. Excellent. So um, I guess as usual, presentation is very important. Yes. So make sure you take some good pictures, progress mm. pictures as well. They'll yes. be, uh, I guess, gives yes. you more points. And just to help you out in entering, we've also got, uh, there's a coupon code which you can enter yes. to order the bits for your um, your comp. Yeah. Yeah. So just look on the events page. Just um, use that uh, code in uh, the website when you're yep. uh, uh, check it out and you'll get it all much Absolutely. cheaper so some of the products are now available in store as well so we've got a bit of a bit of a package here now so mm. slowly we are having some available here so there's a bit of a card inside it gives you some basic instruction on what to do with this uh Hearns workshop parts yeah some hints and the case so they won't break off mm. uh and uh in the last uh, few days we've finalized a couple of new ones so this one is a good one it's very tiny we've probably popped the camera yeah, for sure. On. So this has been requested, and I can understand why. So let me see if I jump on this one. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Yes. So sorry, guys. Can so we've got two different scales here, and it may be a bit difficult to see, but these are skulls, and they're actually very well detailed skulls. Uh, one piece with the jaw. So here we've got um, 48 scale. And 35th scale. So 35th scale ones are the bigger ones. And there sorry, everyone. They're the ones that um, uh, I guess are more common with the 35th scale military. And the 48th scale ones are very common for war gaming. So all the guys have got their uh, uh, little minis. Uh, I think it's equivalent to 28 mil. So how many little ones are there? 24, is it? I think it's 24 little one and uh, 15 of the larger ones. Right. Okay. So we've got that set. We're just preparing that um, uh, to be available shortly. Hey, it actually, it's, on, it's on there. That's okay, already, they're available now. So yeah, that'll be a good one if you want to add that to the competition. And again, as always, if you have any other ideas, uh, obviously let us know. We can uh, we can uh, add it to our list. We've got yep. a long, long list of uh, new 
uh, products and ideas and um, it will be coming out slowly toward the next uh, next few months. I think That's next right. month's maybe a bit slower as we're getting busier. Yes, coming up to Christmas. But we're, we're always working on something. So yeah, there's always something new coming out every week. Absolutely. So this one was reasonably quick, was almost ready and was just a matter of uh, finalizing a few things. So hmm. excellent. So should we look through the car? We should. I think there's already a guest there. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? That's probably too easy. Is it, what do you mean it's too easy? Rob's already taking a guess. <laughs> really? So, yeah, it's pretty good, is it? It's fun. <laughs> he, he guessed. I think he's, uh, Rob is suggesting that he's a Cortina. Okay, yeah, that's pretty close. I think it's pretty, very, very close. Yep. And uh, let's see if we get the, the uh, model and years and... Uh, what, what race did this win? Ah, How actually, there's a yeah, race yeah, yeah, yeah. winner. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so let's, let's see if we can one. get to that one. Yep. Very good. So last week we had a request of talking about Meccano. Yes. And it's a uh, yes. really good, uh, good suggestion. Yep. We've got uh, a lot of Meccano in. Absolutely. Um, Let's grab a few. So I've made a selection of a few of the different sizes of sets that they make. So you've got the really basic ones here. So a little starter set. And then you've got the larger Ducati. Yeah. And then... Got we've the got gigantic 25-in-1 yeah. set. Um, this is actually a classic. This has been around for some time. It's been refreshed a few times. Yes. But it's probably one of the most comprehensive and uh, most common sets that Meccano does. Yeah, it's quite popular because it's also motorized. Absolutely, mm. yeah. And it does give you ability of doing 25 different models. Yes. Uh, I've got all the pulleys and, and, and different... Uh, um, the ability of doing quite a few different uh, uh, models. You've got cranes, you've got planes, you can mm. do helicopters. Really, so lots of different things. Definitely, for the young up-and-coming engineer. Absolutely. Very, very good. And then this is a new type. This is a bucket type. Yeah. So this is more of a traditional style. It's got yes. all the shapes inside, but it doesn't have the motorization bits. Correct. Yeah. Meccano does have a very, very interesting history as well. It does. It so from Hornby, actually. It did. So Frank Hornby uh, came up with the idea in 1898. But then he actually came um, with his first product in 1901. Yes. Um, and they, they started off as being pretty basic. You just had uh, strips of metal with holes in it. Screws, screws and then various gears and things yeah and then eventually got better and um uh to the stage where uh they became nickel plated uh in around about 1907 to that right. high quality um and all the gears started being made in yep. brass wow so and from there it hasn't really changed very much the whole concept of meccano is pretty quite consistent absolutely yes and here we are today with a uh, huge range they do have a plastic range as well for the younger ones they do yes. a more basic which is helpful for the young kids so they can learn to use tools yes but otherwise for uh as for their range as we saw before they go from the little ones got very yep. few pieces and they start having bikes as well yeah uh, that's a ducati was that a ducati that's a ducati. yeah that's a ducati yeah. yeah and they had a ferrari as well i think uh last year i don't know if it's still in range yeah quite comprehensive uh range of meccano so yeah let's so see if any of you is uh is anyone using meccano here i see Nothing so far. I see oh, Johnny sure. Meccano comes around. Hopefully, he's not going to miss out this event. <laughs> <laughs> Might be one of those ones where we share the Meccano and Johnny yeah, doesn't around. turn up. I guess they could also make a really good Christmas present for all the young ones, too. Absolutely. This is a classic. I think the big set uh, is definitely a classic for Christmas. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's a big project. It's all, it's got, it's really well laid out. It's got the plastic case here with yep. a little handle. It's got two layers full of bits in it. Absolutely. So yeah. that's, uh, that's uh, good fun. So here we go. <laughs> Johnny's online, so hopefully we gave enough information, Johnny. Did I get it all right? Absolutely. I'm some... sure we can add to that as well with uh, the history. There is a lot more history. So as, so as, as you, you you probably picked up, like Frank Hornby is also yes. the same Hornby that uh, created Hornby Railway. What a trend. So yes. this is where it all started and then expanded into railway. Definitely pioneer of the hobby. Yes, In, in sure. all directions. So. Hmm. Excellent. So that's for Meccano. So let us know if you have any question, but that's a, a fantastic way to get kids into a bit more mechanical and practical yeah, kind sure. of exercises. There's, there's quite a huge range. So this is only a small selection. Yes. So you can always come in or check online to see what the other things are. Definitely. But this gives you an idea of the sort of sizes you can move through. Absolutely. Yeah. So. While you guys are packing that up, Joby yep. suggested that it's also a very good educational kit, like you guys said. Mm. Yeah. And uh, we've had uh, we had two quotes. Um, Con, I think, has made a pretty decent guess on what we've got at the front here. Oh, yeah, four Cortina Butter sixty three. Very close. Is it? Not quite. Yeah. Very close, but not quite. Oh yeah, it's close. Yeah, close. Yeah. Sorry, I had to check my uh, documentation for that. And uh, Boogzilla also. Said yeah, I'm reading this. <laughs> yeah, so I believe uh, you're using the sweep foam tires, um, and uh, so Boogzilla put these sweeps um, foam tires to 120 k's an hour. 120 k's? Yes. Wow, that's, that's a pretty, very good result. 
hundred twenty so, k's is um, it's pretty heavy scary when you're driving up twenty k's. <laughs> I put them on to a couple of different cars, but not quite that speed yet. So that's a uh, very good feedback. We we definitely like those. They've been quite popular. We we'll have to get a car for you for velodrome. So yes, you can do definitely. Yeah, that would be good actually. So you should try to get uh, onto the velodrome, and uh, they'll be in January. So we should actually mention yeah, about should the velodrome. Be, yeah, yeah. So we we mentioned earlier that the uh, velodrome was kicking off again. So we heard from Tony Gray and uh, uh, Tony Prero. They're, yes. they're right into it. So it hasn't been held at uh, the Coburg Velodrome for a very, very long time. Absolutely. So I think we're all looking forward to this. Particularly um, since we've been locked up for so long. It plenty will. of time to make um, projects happen. And I have seen some pretty awesome projects come There's about. some really, really interesting ones. We, so we've yeah. been receiving some uh, top secret photos. Yeah, that's right. Which we can't show you now, but eventually we'll be able to show you. You will see them live when yes. you turn up at the event. But, so even uh, if you don't yeah. want to go there to drive, you should definitely come. Come to watch. Come to watch is yeah. going to be a fun one. Yeah. So, lots of uh, preparation happening behind the scenes from different people. Yep, that's right. Really tiny cars, really big cars. That's it. So we don't have a firm date as yet. No. But just make sure you go to the, our events page. You'll see the Velodrome event there. Yeah. Just make sure you um, say you're interested, and then you'll get the, all the, um, the updates. Yeah. yeah. So as we update the date, you'll you'll find out, and then make sure you're there. Absolutely. We'll be there. So, very much looking forward to that. So. Yeah. Good, so this week we actually start receiving a lot of stock. We did. So, um, I think we should do a mention about some model railway stuff. Yes. So, we receive quite a bit of Woodland City, Grain Farish, and um, Buckman. But I think we should focus on some of the Woodland City. Yeah, quite I think a few so. Things, so, let's grab those. Well, some uh, of this is new too. This is so reasonably new, yeah, absolutely. They've expanded the range. So, the range is already really huge. Huge. And they're very well known for all their scatter top materials for doing um, uh, grasses. Yep. and soil effects and ballast but they're expanding it with more All kind of different, yeah, uh, different accessories parts. yeah so for those that don't know Woodland Scenics is, uh, is a company part of the Buckman uh, group yep. um, Buckman Branch Line Grain Farish yep. and they definitely specialize in to scenery yes. and uh, so the last year they came up with a uh, static grass applicator yep. and uh, it's a huge improvement uh, it is quite a few different uh, features compared to a traditional static grass applicator. Well, which... this is like the premium one. Absolutely. Yeah. So you've probably seen in earlier um, uh, videos where yep. we've actually shown you how a static grass applicator works. Yeah. So this works on the same principle, but it's got the features built into it that make it a lot easier to use and also more Definitely. powerful. More powerful. You can actually have different type of uh, uh, fiber inside as well. So you can have two different, there is a separation that you can install in the middle. Yep. They have different type of fibers in. So when you sprinkle your grass, you can have short one, long one or different colors. Yep. all at once which is brilliant but then they also included a, a vacuum kind of system yeah so what that means is when you put your static grass it, there are always some fibers that don't actually um yeah they don't take to the surface, take the surface. Always, yeah so loose. normally what you do you tend to tip over your your, your, your project and let the grass fall into your, your living room I yeah suppose. it goes everywhere it goes everywhere really but with this one you can simply vacuum it and yeah, just suck it all up and re reuse it and reuse it as well yeah so very effective and much cleaner compared much cleaner. to the traditional dipping. You, you could always use your, your larger vacuum cleaner, but um, that gets a it's bit probably messy. too powerful, really, yeah. as well. So, um, static grass, and, and they call it model, model vac. Very, very good system. And they've got a range of static grass as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, not just for doing um, um, landscaping, even for maintaining your layout after you're finished, because you get dust and things falling on your landscape. Very good point. So, yeah, you can just clean it up as you go. Just a little. Keep it tidy. Uh, yeah, that's right. Definitely. So, that's a good option. And then this year they start releasing other accessories, which is um, kind of this uh, kind of greens, different greens to do so, edges and yeah. So you're, prob you're probably aware of tufts. So tufts yeah. are like a little round bits yes. of grass. So these are strips. So I guess it's like strip lawn. You can apply anywhere. You can even cut them down to size. So they're, they're full length of the packet here. But you can chop them down to whatever your size you like. And they're quite long lengths, different colors. So you've got this sort of burnt green one yeah. here, uh, bright green, sort of um, spring type grass. And they're very easy to apply. Definitely. And in their range, I think they've got four or five colors, like like on everything they do, mm. four, five, six different different tones. Yep. Um, and there's, there's got the broccoli, that's my favorite. Broccoli, but it's not quite a, broccoli. But it's not quite broccoli, but yeah. looks very similar to so, this. So these are um, uh, longer tufts, I guess. More like uh, uh, a tuft of weeds. I guess with uh, little flowering bits on the top. Yes. I wonder if we might be able to see yeah, some more detail on those because the side here. there is a bit of detail yeah. there you can't pick up from the wide. 
Here we go. So, mm. this is quite nice actually. So that's why we call it broccoli. Cause that's it looks my broccoli. Like little, yeah. Little and broccoli here you see some uh, um, some longer ones here. Yeah. So they look like reeds. Oh. Little flowering bits on the end. And then what do we have? Got this one's here. There's a lighter broccoli. Lighter broccoli. Yeah. Yep. Cool. That's better. Uh, and I've got some colourful ones. It's some with a some red fruit kind of thing, red and yeah, yellow, yeah, a bit more right. yellowish. Yeah. A bit more like canola or something like that. So quite mm. quite nice uh, range. And then we have um, a range of uh, of the different fences. fences. That's a quite wide range as well, actually. Uh, they do the same type of fences in N scale and uh, HO. Um, let's see. So actually, this is the same as you can see. That's. Uh, Sorry, sorry. Uh, that's uh, uh, yeah, that's the end scale version. So you can see the two options here. Yeah. And then so yeah, white picket fences are really nice. Type one of. And you got this uh, uh, a bit more kind of wooden. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, withered. Was, they call it privacy fence actually. Privacy. Got a gate as well here. So. You know, this looks like it's from the outback. Yeah, mm. definitely. And I think there's six or seven, uh, seven different variation of the of the fence system. Definitely makes it a lot easier because before this sort of stuff, you just you have to scratch, scratch build them. It takes forever. A bit of a project. Yep. So then we, we move these. to the sink. Uh, this is Syncraft. So Syncraft is the building kind of division of uh, Bug Branch Line. And uh, again, we've got for some more accessory type products. So uh, what is this one? That's a that's a lamp. Yeah. So the, what sort of lamps are they? Oh, yard lamps. Yeah, okay. yard lamps. Yeah. So for a train yard. Yeah, absolutely. And they've got a ladder here. For maintenance, so that's quite nice. And then they have what else do we have there? So got got these. There's a security fence actually. There's another which... type of fence. Yeah, here you go. You can see here. That's a bit more, kind of probably metal type fence. And and relay boxes. Yeah, relay boxes. Here we go. It's quite very de well detailed and they're mostly weathered as well. And what do we have here? That's uh, water. a water a water crane. Okay, so that's a must have. On, on a on a on a train set, but so definitely see, added so much well, character. Very well detailed, actually. You can see it's all weathered and curled up properly. It fits in easily, and then they have uh, as part of the end scale range. Um, we've got some lifting jacks here. This is end scale, grain mm -hmm. parish, and what do we have here? This is uh, some some walls. Yep. As you can see there is a door as well, uh, and again the range is quite comprehensive here as well. So. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good to good see stuff. all this. So, huge range. So this came in just this week, mm. and finally the Woodland Scenics rack is full again. Hasn't yep. been full for uh, for the past few months, but definitely a good solid restock. Yeah, for sure. Quite a few accessories. So yes, some of those are really good for um, general dioramas as well. So if you do, yeah, that's right. You know, um, specifically the H O double O. You know, it's very close to the seventy second type. That's right. Uh, dioramas. So some of those can be repurposed for that. Also, people using them for terrariums. In terrariums, absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Excellent. So. Yeah. Got a couple of questions here. Mm -hmm. Pebble and someone, I think they had a guess on the car a while. Ah. I think. Someone thought it was a Lotus Cortina. Uh, well, it is a Cortina. I'm not sure if it's an actual Lotus. Lotus, so I wouldn't know that. Hmm. And we've had some more people's. Uh, we have a uh, hello from Canada. Okay. Oh, hello. hello. Welcome. Good day. <laughs> so, we've got people from uh, from overseas, which is great. So, obviously, we, 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 we can. Uh, we can travel very much, so we can still uh, we can still interact. Yes. So what else we have here? So that's uh, that's a Cortina. So we all agree on that. Yes. And it's not 1963. No, but it's close. But it's actually brand new. This is just a brand new release from Classic Collectibles. Yes. Arrived yes. last night. So very good. So a few other details, like who drove it and which race was it. Okay, so Tony is asking if he's a Cortina Bathurst winner. Yes. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Top, top, Bathurst winner. 1964, not quite right. Very close. Getting closer. So, yeah. I think we're going to be talking about batteries last week. Yes. As we get into Christmas, you know, yep. people get new remote control cars. So, batteries was the topic for last week. Okay. And today we're going to talk about servos. Okay. That's very important out. too. Absolutely. So, I've got a bit of a selection here. So, we can start talking about servos. So interesting, the servos used for radio control cars haven't changed uh, very much in terms of their shape or their functionality. 
So what has changed is um, technology that's gone into the servo for increasing performance and also the materials that are uh, used for them. So those materials that make them uh, stronger, uh, more efficient uh, and tougher for a particular purpose. So there's a lot more choice these days. Absolutely. But there's a, a few factors in them. Um, so just to make it easier for you to understand and uh, how to select a servo for your particular situation. Absolutely. So servo are to very useful steer cars for steering purposes yeah and for gas as well yep obviously for airplanes as well for rudders and yep. different uh, different control different surfaces. control surfaces yeah absolutely yeah. so they effectively help you move different uh different things yeah you know, within your uh, remote control vehicle yeah and obviously there's different types and different yes. shapes that's right so well i guess with the shape they're basically as you can see here they're basically a block type setup so with inside your on the bottom, there'll be a control board. So you've got the wire, it goes to the control board. So the wire's got uh, three um, parts to it. There's a positive, a negative, and a signal. So hence the positive is for positive battery, negative yep. for negative battery, and then the signal tells it how far to move. And then from the board, the board will power the motor, which is mounted inside. And then there's a series of reduction gears within the top section to your final output gear. And then you normally have a horn, which moves back and forth. And that's pretty much the... Um, the, the, way, the way they work yeah so obviously different uh, different type different sizes actually so yes. this is probably one of the most standard size or yeah. we we'll probably call a standard rc yeah, car call that a standard size yes uh but then you go smaller i've got one a tiny one here that i want to open actually that's more uh used for aircraft the aircraft tend to have quite quite a small uh, servos often enough on yeah the, they do the smaller aircraft so you can get smaller than this one as well and it's smaller again so um this is a 3.1 kg so that's actually quite powerful for its size mm. but as you can see there's different sizes and then you go bigger again when you go into fifth scale or that's right. like the x max or fifth scale big trucks they get yeah. bigger, bigger scale again so yeah different sizes so but what you see here is probably one of the one you will see the most around that's right then we this servo can be analog and digital as well that's right so tradi traditionally the servos were released as an analog type uh so it had an analog signal that went to yep. the uh the controller um over the years they've come out with digital so digital has higher resolution so it sends a, a more uh, i guess a, a finer uh signal, signal so that the actual output can move at finer increments because yeah. it, it actually moves at steps yeah. if you magnified it and digital would generally have twice the resolution at least Absolutely. compared to analog obviously everything needs to match you know you're ready right. to be able to control digital yes uh, and all that so yes. always um you know you need to uh make sure that your equipment is all kind of uh um, yes it's capable kind of, of capable yes of. because with some of the simpler analog type yeah. radios uh if you try to drive a digital servo yeah. it the the servo may continue to hunt because you're yes. only getting half the information it's expecting correct and it'll just start it'll keep ticking and it'll, it could get to a point where it starts wearing itself out absolutely the heat. and it will, won't work too well yes. so um and then we have the type of motor inside so it can be yes. brushed or brushless as well that's right so we brush there's a few different types as well so the yep. cheaper motors would be um uh i guess brushed with the brushes in them and then you can also get cordless motors Cordless. Yep. and then from there you go on to brushless, brushless. yeah top of the range so they're, yes. they're more effective in from a power consumption as well so when you when you're racing and you do long longer races uh you you only uh can fit a smaller battery in your car so yes uh some of the all the servers tend to use a lot more power really and the modern yes. server um, a lot more efficient so you yes. can probably get a good hour of runtime yep. on your battery specifically yep. when you race nitro cars well that's right yeah, yeah because the brushes are so much more efficient yes um and also it has a lot more power for its size exactly and, and more powerful as well so. yes and uh i guess the way you choose your servo is um the specifications just two key parameters yes. obviously speed and torque yes. obviously so speed is how fast it goes from one side to the other yes and torque how much Effectively, power does the servo. Yes, how much it can pull. Can yes. pull, absolutely. So, these are the two key parameters. And hmm. uh, normally, the the same servo can come in high speed and and high torque that's because right. it's metal so, gearing effectively. Well, that's it. So you'll you'll quite often see servos in the same series, which may have a, a slightly different part number, simply because the the guts of the uh, the servo so, are the same. So the yep. motor and the control board will be the same, and it's uh, altering the output by a different gear ratio. So you may make it operate faster but you give up a bit of the torque. torque but if you go the other way if you increase the torque it will move yeah. slower 
So there's a bit of a trade-off depending on what you and need. And obviously the voltage has something to do with that as well. So it does. Original server were 4.86 volts yes. in the past. Yes. Um, and today they get up to 7.4 and sometimes obviously higher as well. But generally speaking for cars, yes. 7.4 is considered high voltage. That's right. They have the voltage, they hide the specs or the speed and the torque, obviously. So That's there right. is a component there as well. Yep. And talking about gears, obviously there can be plastic gear and metal gear and titanium as well. That's right. Obviously. Yes. So... So plastic is traditionally nylon top gears. Yes. They're reasonably tough, but they don't handle shock very well. So all your standard type of servos will be plastic, which is fine in most situations. So unless it's a um, high performance use, like a lot of cars get a lot of shock. Yes. So if it's a high performance car, you'll probably want to get metal at least. Exactly. And then if you can, so uh, you get uh, more premium servos with titanium. So yeah. titanium has the same strength as a steel yeah. with less weight. Less weight. Yeah. So it's, it's obviously weight is always an important factor for uh, for cars, specifically when you're racing. Yes. So that's uh, uh, obviously important. And then to, to wrap this up, there's, uh, there's a physical construction. So what I have here, this is uh, a fully metal case servo. Yes. Uh, this is a brand from KO. Yes. And um, uh, there's a top and the bottom and the middle part is metal and yeah. some of, and the bottom is plastic in this case, I think, yeah. And then there's other ones that are fully metal and fully plastic, yes. like the one I have in this box here. So the advantage of the metal, it, it keeps a more rigid structure. So under stress, there's less chances of the body warping because yes. if it does warp, there's chances of breaking the gears because they're, they're warping Absolutely. as well. So. The other benefit is um, it also helps to keep the motor cool. cool. So particularly, sometimes you have just a middle part in the center yes, and that'll be wrapped around the motor to keep it cool. Exactly. And then some of the more premium ones have the metal on the top as well. So that helps it right. remain solid while it's mounted within the model. And so there's a all different combination of uh, metal and plastic. Yes. And obviously, they, the more premium they are, the more metal tend to be. You know, the more, more the, the casing is going to be fully metal. Yes. And uh, I guess the last part that I think is I find is very important is mm. uh, is the lead. Is the the, the 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 plug is normally a traditional what we call a Futaba or JR I guess plug. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes you may have the little fin here. Yeah. So the don't. fin is a Futaba type. Yeah. Um, and then they've designed them to the point now that if you just trim off the fin, it What's becomes a universal, universal which they exactly. call a uni plug. But the length of the um, lead is always very important because yes. some of the cars you need a longer lead. Yes. Um, and then on other cars you don't. So that's another important factor. So sometimes you have to trim it or you have to extend it so you can get extenders. Yes. So in rock rollers, often yep. you need a very long, very long. Uh, cable because you go from the front all the way to your receiver which may be at the back yes uh on racing cars normally we tend to chop them really short because we just go from the front all the way to the receiver which yes. often sit just behind it keeps it much neater absolutely and less wiring flying around yep um and what else do we have about servos um waterproofing yes so, so important yes so traditionally you uh they'll be called water resistant yes because they are fairly well sealed, sealed. and most of them will have a, a a rubber o-ring type gasket yeah. in them so they're generally dust proof but then you get to the various stages where you actually want to put your vehicle inside water so if it's being submerged there's different yeah. levels of waterproofing yes. you can get now different ip ratings so talking about that this one that just arrived today from highest um actually not this one uh this one b 900 w that's yep. a waterproof and is ip67 right which is a pretty good rating i think is a meter deep or two meter deep for up, up to an hour or some, something like that so so that means you can put your rc car in water and submerge it and uh, in theory should be all fine it's fully submerged as long as you can see it you'll exactly. be okay you should be fine so yep. um this is a very good servo that is fully waterproof yep. um the mks um 599 even though they don't say i don't think it's waterproof but it's actually fully fully sealed and water resistant yep. so you can submerge this as well um I guess, you know, in my experience, I wouldn't submerge a $300 servo because... Um, well, it's $300. Probably $300 <laughs> still. But uh, if you do rock rolling, you end up putting some water on them. So Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess that. you can be confident that they can handle some water. Absolutely. If you want to be absolutely certain that you can actually put things deep into water, then this will be the one to go for a fully waterproof type. Exactly. So, yeah. obviously, there's quite a few brands out there. There's a lot of different brands, a lot of different specs that will fit into each other. Each other. And yeah. I guess it can be a little bit confusing working out what sort of spec you need. Yes. But I guess with a little bit of research, I'm sure on the net or you can ask anyone, they'll be able to uh, guide you with rough Absolutely. specs that they use for a particular model. Absolutely. You know, like a 10 scale car, you would think about, well, you need about three and a half kilos at least of so, torque for your, your steering. Exactly. 
And then if you're talking about a, a fuel powered car, then you probably want 20 kilos plus 20, 25 steering. kilos, absolutely. Yeah. So from there, you can work out, oh, you, you need to look for a particular range to suit absolutely. your model. And generally speaking, you go from $30 servo, like this for an RC car, yes. all the way for to two or three hundred dollars for a you know one eight buggy. Yes, and the difference is considerable. It is. Um, you know these are really good for your Hornet or entry level car. Yep. But when you start racing and you go from a you know maybe one hundred and fifty dollar servo to a three hundred dollar servo, it's surprising, but there is actually a huge difference. You actually uh, feel the actual difference. You feel more connected to the car. It's yes. more direct, more yes. responsive. Yes. Um, so here we have a bit of a selection of brands. So um, Savox, virtually well, everyone has heard of Savox, it's a very good um, uh, manufacturer, they do some servo from entry level all the yes. way to higher end servo and this waterproof uh, option here. Yep, um, huge range. High Tech is a very established brand, yes. they've been manufacturing yeah, servo for a very range. long time. Yes. And then we have here uh, MKS. Yes, that's a very premium. Form. Very premium servo, they're very well known for helicopters and uh, high end kind of uh, servos, there's a few different versions. Um, as well in their range mm -hmm. and uh, then we have some higher steel uh, that's a, another very good quality uh, servo manufacturer yep and here with me I've got my old KO KO classics that is probably one of the best servo I ever used and I have to say that I got some really good service from this company as well in the past so I actually burned the servos by reverse polarity and yes it <laughs> does happen and it's always bad news but uh, I remember sending them to KO and they repair them for a fee and yes. send them back. That's Actually, the best uh, you can ask for yes. from a manufacturer. I was recently reminiscing with uh, uh, one of my old friends, uh, Jeremy. We were talking about the early KO servos, which had the uh, the separate power boost wire. So it used to be a blue wire, which you connected up to 7.2 yeah. volts. So bypassing the BC directly to the battery, you had to make sure you had the choke in there yes. so it didn't explode. Yes. And they were phenomenal servos. So the speeds you could achieve out of those servos was uh, 0 0.8 second wow. and I mean the current fast servos are very similar I mean they go down to 0 0.06 six or something I think this one is a point a lot of people servo. with 0 0.06 wouldn't be able to tell the difference between that and a point zero eight. so Absolutely even not. even when the KO came out with that that would have been 10 15 years ago they were very ahead of their time absolutely so very good quality so my suggestion is always to invest some uh, on a good servo because it does make a difference and they tend to last a lot longer yes. um, this, this KO um, has been going for many years for me and they tend to last. So, uh, other important thing when you have a servo is maintenance. Yes. When you install a servo on a car, you always need to set your endpoints. That's really important. Yes. So, you need to tell your controller uh, where to stop, really. Otherwise, you over overstretch them yep. and you end up damaging the gears and breaking them. Or you put too much strain on the motor when you go on full lock. And eventually over time you deteriorate and burn the motor. Yeah. So that really sort of goes back to where we're talking about analog and digital. So yes. with the analogs, they, they have a little bit more leeway with, um, I guess, miss setup like that. Yeah. Um, so they'll just buzz as they're, they're over compensating and it will be warming up the motor. Yep. But if you tend to do that with digital servos, they'll end up burning the board. Yes, yep. absolutely. So, so setup is very important. Very, very important. So if yep. you set up properly, a, a good high quality servo can last you really, really a long time. Hmm. So. I think we've got a few questions here. Like yeah. A few. Okay, so. You've got guesses on the car again. All right, let's leave the car for a moment. So, let's see what uh, question we have on servos. Anything in particular? Um, you can use, uh, Johnny suggests you can use uh, small fright washers to help uh, stop the servo jitter. That's a good suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I've got a few guesses on the car. Got a question in Titanic. So let's see if anyone has any more questions on the servos. Um, I think we have most to cover on servos. Okay. Let's see if uh, anyone has questions on servos. I do have one for you. Um, sure. Instead of a, an extender connector, yeah. is there also a possibility of splicing manually the positive and the, I'm guessing it's just a positive and negative cable and extending it manually that way? Well, you could do. So you, you, could, you could cut this and then solder directly onto yeah. here. Yeah. That's so probably, that'll be the best way to extend it, I guess. It'll yeah. be more permanent. Mm -hmm. But if you want it easier, just say you want to use that in another model, then if you just have another one that plugs on the end, that'll be more versatile. Perfect. Yeah. Just, just in case someone wants to get hands Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Okay. So well, there you go. Let's that's, that's park this aside. Yeah, that's several. So uh, let's park those aside here again. So what do we get on the car? Do we get any winners? 
I think we I can I could see a winner there. <laughs> really? All right. I think I've seen it. Uh, I have to scroll back up. Mm. So we have a 1965. She's yeah. correct. Yes. Four Cortina GT500. I think that's pretty correct, isn't I it? I think he's very correct. Absolutely. So we've got it. Do we have any more guesses? Well, how about someone saying it was uh, Barry Seton's Cortina? I'm not sure about that part. Does well, it say it's got his name on the side of it. So oh, I think it does say that. that. Yes, one. absolutely. Yes, yes. Very good. Okay. So, brand new release, 118 scale from Classic Collectibles for Cortina um, GT500. Um, so this is a diecast model, obviously. And the door cannot. Oh, let's not damage it. We, we need a small tool actually for that. They look quite tight. Very well finished, actually. Mm. You can see seat belts inside. Got a light brown interiors beige. Yeah, it's interesting with the driver's seat belt he doesn't have a driver's bucket seat it's a regular seat oh true that actually yes that's and, uh, the, and the seat belts are just go from the back they're hanging from the, the back parcel shelf there all the way through to the front so i mean if you had a big whack in that you would have felt it so okay well continue. done absolutely well done and uh i think there was a question on the titanic yes BJ? yes yeah. Yeah. Uh, Trump yes. doesn't have contact info. How do I order another LED kit uh, for my ship so I can get the lower hull of my ship? I reckon that probably your Facebook would be your best bit with that one. Yeah. Contact Trumpeter on Facebook, and I think their messaging service would get to them quicker than if you tried to email them. I would suggest that. Yeah. Alternatively, yeah. if you're a bit handy with some LEDs, yeah. you could probably extend that yourself. Because, yes, so the lighter kit only does a top section. But the, the base section uh, is bare, and you'll probably be able to get some strip LEDs. LED and just add yeah. them up. Yeah, yeah. And, and just um, uh, piggyback some power lines from uh, the from top the section, main section and then just yeah. put them down to the bottom. Yeah, definitely. We've hmm. got some LED also from um, Green Stuff World. Green Stuff World, yep. yeah. And yep. also from GSI. GSI, yeah. So they're the individual ones. But I guess with a ship like this big, yeah, strip lighting, you should be able to find that pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Hmm. Very good. So, moving on, yep. we have received a lot more stuff this week, as you can Lots see. Lots of exciting here. stuff. So, where should we start? Well, so how about if we, if we. Oh, we've already been talking about cars. So, let's get to the car last, right? So, let's look at. Okay, Airfix. We've got some new Airfix in. So, yes. over this side. That's we've got uh, this Spitfire here. So, Spitfire Mark. Uh, what is it? Mark 14? So it looks quite eye-catching, red colour. Yeah, definitely. So there's also definitely. a silver livery, which you might see here. So this was for after the war. So obviously there's a lot of aircraft left over from after the war. Yeah. And not all of them were destroyed. Some of them were used for air racing. Or repurposed, uh, effectively. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So very nice civilian type kit. So yeah. much more um, colourful. So it would be a nice addition to your collection. I mean, you have all your military spitties there and then have that one in the centre. So, and this is um, uh, based on one of their newer kits too. So very nicely cut. Cut, just a good yep. mould and all that. Yep. That's right. Should be well finished. Yep. Okay, so you got your, your spitty there. Got some uh, really plastic stuff. Okay, so from Top Gun. So obviously Top Gun is a favourite of a lot of people. It introduced, introduced everyone to the F-14 Tomcat. Yes. Everyone knows the F-14 Tomcat. So you probably see the F-5E. So this is the plane that they used to represent a, a MiG when they were fighting them because they didn't actually have yeah. a MiG. Um, and then you've got uh, uh, the Skyhawk, which was Jester's plane, which was chasing the F-14s in. And then you've got something new here. This is from the new movie, Top Gun Maverick. So it's P-51 Mustang. Nice. So I don't know how it fits in, because it doesn't seem right. <laughs> yeah, true. But we'll find out when we'll we find see the movie. Very soon with the movie. That's right. So the movie should be out soon, I believe. Yeah, I, I don't know when it's getting released here. It might be next year for us. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's uh, good to see some new... Um, Airfix releases. Yep, for sure. And then we move to our Japanese. Uh, actually, we've got the BMW bike there. Oh, well, this is the Italeri. A BMW? Absolutely. Okay, a bit of a classic. This is a Paris, uh, Paris Dakar uh, winner from memory. Yeah. So BMW did very well with the Paris Dakar for many, many, many years. years. And um, I mean, I don't even know how these motorcycle guys go through the, the Dakar. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, they fall left, right, and center and they die. And, they... and I mean, it's just it's madness. Very impressive. Right? This is a very impressive kit. I've seen this built at the uh, German uh, fair this year. Yeah. In, in uh, 
in early in in February, and it is actually a very well made kit. So, so good size kit, one nine scale. Yes. So traditionally the one twelve scale. Uh, so you get a, a little lot, bit bigger. Yeah. Yes. So you got more size, and you'll see a lot more of the detail. You can even add more detail quite easily if you like. So that's quite nice. That's from Italeri. Italeri, yeah. Yep. And then we move on to stuff that just arrived, arrived today. So as I said last week, we were expecting a very large delivery from Japan. And here it is. Okay, so we've got so. a bit of everything. So I'm sure you like that one there, Nick. That's uh, that's one of my favorite. Yep. So this is um, uh, part of the Motoroid series from um, a Good Smile Company. Uh, this is a new Aerial. So I'm not too sure where Aerial comes from. I, I thought it was from... Um, um, uh, was it Full Metal Panic? But I'm not too sure now. But uh, it's similar in line to the um, Frame, Frame Arm Girls. girls yeah. So they're a highly poseable um, model kit. Model kits, yes. Yeah, they got really um, organic type uh, movement. Movements, yeah. And quite often um, they'll be used for stop motion. So you get a better idea on the back here. So you get a lot of options. There'll be different option hands, uh, faces. Um, and equipment like weapons and then of course you can get extras for them as well Absolutely. and then a similar sort of thing would be this one here from Hexagear so it's a Kotobukiya Kota. type of thing so Hexagear have um, some of the larger um, robots as well and they're called Hexagear because they, they use a hex for fitting certain things right so these are the figures that are designed to fit into the robots and the other vehicles and these have similar sort of posability as these so even though they're quite small um, they're 124 scale so figure would be only this big but this box is jam-packed full of options as well so, so you can different see hands. from the side here you can see different uh actually you should probably put this uh so like coming yeah this one. yeah you get a better idea of um you get different uh different hats really so you got sunglasses with a cap yep different hats and then see there yep there's different hair reasons different hair yeah yep yeah that's longer and shorter um I think there's a couple yeah. of different arm So you can mates. see that kneeling pose there. I mean, that's quite impressive. That's, that's very nice, actually. Yeah, yeah. looks very natural. So you see how the ankles are all bent as well. Your armament at the back here. It's another position again. So it looks like it'll give you different different hands. Yep. Different positions. A couple of different uh, uh, guns. And a few accessories. Mm. So that's from the Hesky range. So there are quite a few different ones. So governors, there's quite a few types. So there's um, uh, fully armored ones and this particular one is uh, quite a new addition very nice okay. and along with this we received quite a few frame arm girls from memory we did it? there's yes. a few bit of yes. a range there so yeah a top up of all the brand new frame arm girls yeah which um they're still out there in a box somewhere we'll uh, probably bring them out next week yes and then how about then, we go on to some mac so hmm. machining krieger you probably all know that we're quite uh, passionate about our machining krieger and we haven't had any for some machining. time now. yeah that's right so they've had um a few releases okay so we'll bring them over here so I've got four here at the moment so all right so this, this is the Custa which a lot of people have been waiting for yes so the walkers tend to be uh, very popular simply because walkers look really cool now this particular one was only available in the past as a, um, a special combo set with the Friedrich so they were together and they were only available from a particular exhibition in Japan right um, of Kao Yokoyama. So Kao Yokoyama is the actual uh, creator of all this. He's an artist. Yes, is, yep. And he does all the uh, box art. So every single release he does, he does a different box art. So that's why they're so collectible as well. So we've got the Kusta, which is a walker. So it's got the, um, uh, the Gatling gun on the front um, and the uh, grenade launchers and different radar on the top. So that's a must-have. So I'm sure these won't last very long. And then the Friedrich is another type yep. of suit. Um, up here. Really groovy. I mean, you can see how the, these evolve from um, kit bashing. Because if you cl have a closer look at the side, you'll see how this evolved from the fuselage of a Hughes 500 helicopter. So, if you can imagine the, uh, where is it? Where's my finger? So the boom coming out of here. So that's the front cockpit there, actually looking forward. So that's where he got his inspiration from for a lot of these suits. That's brilliant. So Friedrich hasn't been around for many, many years. So that's out again. And then over this side, we've got the Altair. So Altair comes from the Groserhund type um, um, mechs. Uh, this was originally out recently this year as a Vega Altair. So Vega was a different version. Um, <clears throat> it was a different type of surveillance version. And this one has a different artwork for the Altair version only. 
and then we've got this different version of the Falky. So the Falky, this is uh, what they call the Bombcat. So it's got slightly different, um, uh, actually, what does it have? They all look very similar. So it's got a, a, a patch included as a, a specialty of this particular kit. Brand new box art. And I think the weaponry may be a little bit different and the, uh, the livery. So I have different so details updated. inside. Yeah. yeah. And um, this is uh, actually, if I can find it, we've got a Hearn's Workshop engine that will fit that's onto right. this. Yeah, that's right. I'm so I'll try and find that in a sec. I think Bori took it on. Oh, okay. okay I think it's uh, is, uh, finishing that one up. Right, no worries. Okay, so yeah, if you want to spice yeah. it up a bit, you can get one of those, yeah. pop it on there, add Absolutely. a lot more detail. It'll be very nice. So that's the new stuff we've got um, for From Machine and Krieger. Machine and Krieger. That's uh, really exciting. Yes. Give that stuff for a little bit. It looks like they're doing lockdown quite a few end up uh, starting a machine and cricket project yes because they right. slowly dried up yes and i think we've got the last one which is a very very exciting one so this is a bit of a rarity now yes so this is the fujimi 112 scale skyline skyline r32 so i mean th this brings back a lot of memories for me because when i started in uh in working in a shop just down the road from our shop was yep. Locke's Sony house. Right. And here was the biggest place to buy Sony products. And Mr. Locke himself had, I think, one of the first R32s in Australia. Right. So he used to see one of these driving around all the time. And this got released shortly afterwards. So this became famous here too because of one um, Bathurst at some stage. So uh, it did, you could get the decals at some stage at that time. So I think they were Winfield sponsorship. So this is a big kit, 112 scale. Wow, look at this. One piece. Yeah. So you can see how it's got opening doors, opening bonnet with full uh, engine detail. That's impressive. Yeah, it gives you a good idea of the size, the isn't size, it, compared yeah. to the 118th. Actually, that's a good comparison. Okay. So there's the interior tub. You've got your seats here, bucket seats. Got the tyres. Got the tyres, yep. Fully. Very nice, very nicely made okay, tires. There's a floor pan. So very okay. decent. Clear bits, the yep, windows. Clear bits. Is that all in one piece as well? Yeah, is it's it? all in yeah. one piece. Yeah, so that's yeah, easy. It makes to it easier. In. Yeah. yeah, the alignment is easy. Then. Okay, you got the interior of the doors, you got the uh, the dash there. Uh, there's the intercooler, and you got the various engine parts. Okay, you got the bodywork here. So you've got the, the bonnet, you got the door Doors. skins. Yeah. You got the rear wing. Uh, this is probably part of the um, uh, the mechanism for the uh, doors, the hinges. You got little mirrors. You got parts of the engine here. An exhaust and all day. Yeah, so you get the, the car. So there's a sump with the drive yep. shaft going to the back because they're four wheel drive. Um, you've got your, your gearboxes here with the, uh, the engine block. Exhaust pipes. Yep. Discs. Disc brakes, yeah. Yep. And then you see the turbos there, the twin turbos. That's cool. And a little bit more, so you got the wheels. They look almost uh, ready for an RC car. Obviously, it's a big 112, <laughs> yeah, it's very right. close to 110. Yep. So they've already been painted with a, um, a bronze yeah, finish. Uh, finish. And then you got uh, you got your radiators, you got your um, fuel tank, suspension components, uprights, um, shocks, drive shafts on that one. And then you get into these bits, which have got some springs, I think, for the, uh, uh, the doors. And then your indicators, your brake lights are all pre-colored in a transparent plastic. It makes it a lot easier. Ready to go. Um, other bits of pieces which I don't recognize. Uh, you got got um, chrome bits for the, the mirrors. And then you got some mesh on the front end for um, the grill as well. And then to finish it off here, you've got... Um, Eccles. Yep, set of decals. So you got some sort of chromey ones at the back there for the mirrors if you like that as well. And then that's for the, the interior mainly. And then of course there's a big... Big manual. That's actually a big, big yeah. format. Like so. Here we go. So there you go. This is uh, quite a rare kit. It's a, a recent re-release. I don't think we'll be seeing these re-release for a number of years again. I guess you could consider these uh, similar to the Tamiya Porsches, Porsches which they've yeah. done recently. They keep, uh, so, they've been releasing some of the older yep. models. That's right. Scale. But when they do it, they only do it um, every few years. So. And they come in very limited numbers yes. and they tend to sell pretty quick. Yes. Okay, let's put this back together. So that's a, that's a bit of um, treasure that we've got here. There's quite a lot more actually that have come in. 
and uh, we may present some more next week yes. and throughout the week through the Facebook we will definitely show you what uh, what we have received hmm. very good so we've got a few so, other uh, Fujimi cards 24 scale Fujimi cards yes. that are in the, in the mix as well yeah very good I think right. that's um, that's about it for all the new stuff I think that is it for today I think yeah. we'll Unless anyone's got some questions Absolutely. about anything <coughs> Sorry, that um, was shown today or anything you'd like to know further. Uh, I think uh, I think it's pretty covered. There's lots of discussion going on here. So Nick was asking about the Hong Kong model 30 second Lancaster uh, cockpit. Yes, yes. Well, Warwick responded already. But yeah, we have still a couple in stock, I think. Yeah, not many not now, many. though. Yeah, but we've, we've had a run on those. Well. Well. Yeah. So, if you're keen, just let us know. There was a few other things just here or there, such as um, someone saying that the Maverick that you saw, sorry, the for the Maverick movie, mm -hmm. Top Gun Maverick, yep. apparently that's his personal plate. Oh, he's got okay. a personal, well, that's a nice personal plane, isn't wow. it? Having a P51 okay. Mustang. Yeah, very, very nice. Handy. Yep. Sh going shopping. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and just a lot of, a lot of uh, everyone seems to like the Skyline. So. Skyline's cool. Oh, Skyline is yep. going to be a good one. Yeah. Tony's mm -hmm. saying he has no more room. In no more room. <laughs> no more room for oh, stash. I don't everyone, believe that. Everyone, everyone don't believe that. Stash a little bit yeah, bigger. you can find some space yeah, here and there. I, I said that. Reshuffle them all. Didn't work for me. No. No. Very good. So, if you have any more questions, let us know in the next few minutes. Otherwise, we're almost at the end today. Hmm. And uh, where is Nathan? <laughs> Nathan is actually on the other side of that wall. Yes. I believe. Yeah, he's close. Nick, you should pop down one of the next Saturdays to say hi. Yep. Can you guys recommend any SC track around Melbourne that are open to the public during the week? Are they, uh, are they open now? Uh, I, I think, well, actually, uh, I think they are open now um, with some restrictions still. Uh, I think they're probably the easiest one to go is probably the Kilo Park on road track, which is open to the public. Yep. Uh, that's probably the easy one to go to. Uh, depending if you're on off road or on road. Uh, on road, there will be a temple store, but it's uh, close to the public. You need to be a member. Um, off road, there is Kilo Kilo Park as well. You need to be a member. Yep. And then we have Knox. I think Knox is open to the public, but you better contact them through the uh, through the Facebook page. Yeah, like Facebook is the easiest way yeah, to contact I think them. So. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Um, yeah. So there's a few tracks around. Just uh, even send us a message on uh, on Facebook, and we can point you in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's a few different types. I mean, different even types. Lilydale's got the bigger track. There's Lilydale, there is um, Sunshine for 1.8 yes. and EMCC for 1.8 off-road. Yep. There's quite a few options out there, so definitely there are some tracks. Very good. So once again, thank you for watching and uh, make sure you follow us throughout the week on uh, Facebook and uh, uh, Instagram. Yeah, that's right. We put through new products, new releases and uh, feel free to comment so we know what to bring next week. That's right. And uh, make sure you join the competition the competition so competition we actually got it going longer this time so it's going for three weeks yes um and we're, we're looking forward to seeing all the entries Absolutely. because we're interested to see what you can do with our and little shop. bits and pieces yes so if you have questions as you go through or you have any suggestion for the Hearns workshop just uh, just let us know and we may be able to uh produce something quickly yep and uh, got one more quick question by the looks of it yeah resin. yep yeah. Uh, for the resin parts, you guys make. Can you guys make anything like 100 scale uh, lifeboats uh, or the Titanic kit? Oh, for the trunk. Oh, that could be interesting. Yeah, we could look at it for sure. Definitely. Be because eventually, I would like to get some 200 scale people figures available yes. for that. Yes, definitely. Because I think it looks a bit big because it's big enough to have interesting people. Yes. So they'll look good with people wandering around the promenades and stuff. Well, we have a set of people that we start working on for yes. for ships. Yes. Uh, hopefully. In the next couple of weeks, we managed to yes. create a small set of uh, 350 and 200, 200? scale yep. people. Yep. And then um, we will with a few, you know, we can look at the um, lifeboats as well. Yes. Excellent. Very good. So, very good. There's the conversation going on about uh, the number of uh, lifeboats in the Titanic. Not enough, apparently. Not enough, apparently. That's yeah, what yeah, you're suggesting. Put more. Very good. All right, then. So everyone, have a good weekend and thank you for watching us again. Yeah. We shall see you next week, Friday, 2 p.m. Same sure. place. Yep, it's been fun. Okay. See you guys later. Thank you. Bye-bye.